9-11 was the most tragic event in U.S. history. On the morning of September 11, 2001, the country was attacked. Terrorists using hijacked planes crashed them into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and one, due to the bravery of those on board, crashed in a field in Pennsylvania. 2,996 people lost their lives. We mourned, we grieved, and we never forgot. And then this bitch comes along. They say those who were alive that day remember where they were when the first plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center. I was in my senior year of high school. Yes, I'm old. Shut the hell up. I was in a class at BOCES, which is like a trade school, but they also do special education. Anyways, I was in a class for graphic arts and communications. When the teacher, whom I actually really hated, got a call from the office, then turned on the television to CNN. We sat there watching the other plane hit the South Tower. Now this video is not really to discuss the events of what happened that day, because that would be a massive video series, which one day I will have the balls to do. So I will try to summarize. In the early morning hours of September 11, 2001, four planes were hijacked. American Airlines Flight 11 departed at 7.59 a.m. from Logan International Airport in Boston. This plane would hit the North Tower at 8.46 p.m followed by United Airlines Flight 175 at 9.04 a.m., which hit the South Tower. It also departed from Logan International Airport. American Airlines Flight 77 departed Washington Dulles International Airport at 8.20 a.m. It would hit the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m. United Airlines Flight 93 departed Newark International Airport at 8.42 a.m. Because of the bravery of those on board, this plane went down in a field in Pennsylvania. The terrorists on board were supposed to attack the Capitol building before before these brave men and women were able to take back control of the plane. At 9.58 a.m., the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. At 10.28 a.m., the North Tower collapsed. Seven World Trade Center was a close building that was damaged by falling debris. Fires erupted in the building. A landing gear from the plane smashed into the side of the building. At 5.21 p.m., that building too collapsed from the damage. 2,996 people lost their lives. 6,000 to 25,000 people were injured. I'm not going into the stupid conspiracy theories like Loose Change, a documentary that has so many versions out because of claims being debunked in it, nor about how Jesse Ventura once famously suggested it was thermite paint that caused the towers to fall. Nope, not gonna go into the Bush administration. Not Al-Qaeda, aka the people who use religion as an excuse to kill innocent people, thus bastardizing that religion, and leading to a rise in people hating people of that religion. No, this video is about a woman who used a tragedy for her own benefit sticking her fat ass right in the middle of that tragedy. She lied, she manipulated people, and she conned people into thinking that she was in the towers that day. Oh, is it what is that? Is that sprints? Is that nightmare? Is that true nightmare? She went by the name Tanya Head, and I'm going to spend this whole video mocking her and being a little bit of an asshole. I'm going to be upfront with this. Instead of telling you Tanya Head's miraculous story of survival, I'm going to tell you that it's bullshit. It is documented that Tanya Head was not even in the country when the 9-11 attacks happened. Her name isn't really Tanya Head. Her name is Alicia Estave Head. And before I go into her fake story, I'm going to tell you her real story. A story of a woman from Barcelona, Spain, who came over to the United States in 2003 and decided to take a shit all over actual 9-11 survivors. He's an asshole. Alicia Head was born to a rich family in Barcelona, Spain on July 31st, 1973. Everything I have read about this bitch says that she came from a prominent family. So odds are, she is a rich bitch. Not only that, she is a spoiled rich bitch. She was the youngest child and the only girl. She was doted on and was given everything she could possibly want. I seriously want to use a C word to describe her because bitch isn't strong enough. You are a cunt, you are a cunt, nobody likes you cause you are a cunt. 
But do you know the old saying that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree? Well, in Head's case, this is pretty true. In 1992, her brother and her father served time in prison for a financial scandal. While I can't find any more than that, it kind of shows since her father had no morals, it's obvious his daughter wouldn't. She went to the University of Barcelona and worked in a hotel. She did have a nasty scar on her arm that she later said came from escaping the Twin Towers, but in actuality, she got into a car accident. But that is one of many stories that Butterface came up with. One was it was from a horse riding accident. But the car accident claim was that she was driving with her fiance in a Ferrari at 125 miles per hour and crashed. For some reason, she bragged that she had lost her arm in the crash, but it was found and sewn back on. Sure, Jan. If she walked away from a 125 mile an hour crash, she would have more than just a burn or a severed limb. She would literally be a vegetable. So how her arm got deformed, I don't know. But I would like to think that she decided to stick her hand in a deep fryer because she couldn't wait for the fries to finish cooking. But people who knew her all pretty much said the same thing. She liked to brag about being from a rich family. She lied constantly, bragged and flexed on people. Her attitude stemmed from the fact that after her father and brother went to prison, she wasn't the center of attention anymore. So she developed this habit of trying to make herself seem more important than she was. Though everyone who met her before she moved to the US pretty much saw through her lies. So from here on, here's how you can tell that this shameful excuse of a human being is lying. She opens her mouth. That's how you can tell. So on September 11, 2001, she was in class. And in Spain, not America. She would come to America in 2003, where she would join a group called the World Trade Center Survivors Network. Her story, which I will get into, inspired the people there. Because she made it so that it was heroic, brave, and made others look like they had it easy. Lying wastes of perfectly good oxygen do that. Because of her story, and how she presented it, people started gathering around her in that support group. She ended up ousting the head of the Survivors Network, which, think about that. The head of the World Trade Center Survivors Network was literally there. He had created this support group to help those with survivor's guilt. And this attention whore comes along with a story that is really something to hear when I get into it, and her fake story gets her to the head of an organization. <laughs> I am kind of relieved that she was not making money off of this because that would have added a new level of anger to this story. But this is what you need to know about this triple-chinned con woman. She spent her life thinking the truth was optional. She wormed her way into a position where she was front and center and she lied to actual 9-11 survivors. Now, it is time for the story that she told. Well, time to go through this bullshit story. No, God, please, no, no, no! Throughout, I will discuss the actual facts when I can. According to this woman, who looks like she's never met a scale she didn't break, she worked for Merrill Lynch, who did not have offices in the World Trade Center. While working for Merrill Lynch, she was heading home one day. She hailed a cab where she met a man named Dave. She thought he was trying to take the cab from her, but he invited her to ride with him, and there was a romance. They went to Hawaii. They had a wedding. No marriage license, though, because they were going to wait until October for that. She worked in the South Tower, according to her, and she watched as the North Tower was hit by the plane. She stated that she counted the floors to the point of impact to discover that Dave was stuck. So there was a Dave and she did marry him, but they never met. Dave was one of the names of the people who lost their lives. And for the sake of Dave's family, I will refrain from mentioning his full name. But how did they get married if they never met? Alicia, as Tanya, got a lawyer who helped her get a posthumous marriage certificate. She married a dead man. Back to her story. She stated that she watched the second plane hit the South Tower. She said she was thrown back. When she woke up, her arm was either burned or dangling by a piece of skin depending on which person she was talking to. She turned to see an assistant that she claimed she had, dead, having been decapitated. Then a man wearing a red bandana over his face came to her and helped her. That man was Wells Crowther, who was a real person and a real hero of 9-11. He was on the 78th floor when the plane hit the building. He came across 17 survivors. He led them down the stairs from the 78th floor, carrying one woman on his back. He headed back up, finding more survivors. He held battle fires. He he rendered first aid and led as many people out of the building as he could. 
Sadly, he passed away in the collapse of the South Tower. And Alicia had used his story to bolster her lies. And Wells' mother believed that her son had saved this Oompa Loompa. To the point that when a local church was to unveil a memorial to this brave man, Alicia was asked to speak. She even wrote a speech, but in a moment of conscience, decided someone else should speak for her. And too bad that was fleeting. Anyways, when the towers were about to collapse, she stated a fireman scooped her up and moved her under a fire truck to shield her. He was the only person in her story that supposedly survived. Which, one, looking at this woman, I am assuming that that would be a very strong fireman. And two, with all the smoke and fire, I highly doubt she was fit enough to walk down all them steps. And I'm just gonna say this now, when writing the script, I wanted to try to avoid fat shaming. But then fact after fact after fact I read pissed me off more and more to the point I don't care. Just realize, I'm insulting her, and only her. He's fat! This woman had the audacity to come up with a fake story. To lie, to people who survived one of the darkest days in American history. To make herself the center of attention in a network of real survivors with real harrowing stories. She was a fraud. She was a fake. And as you're gonna find out, she manipulated other people's emotions in this survivor's network. So I'll try to keep the insults of her weight to a minimum. <laughs> But here's an example of how she manipulated people. She decided that, with this fake story, to do what is known as flood therapy. This is when you relive the most traumatic moment of your life over and over again. Well, she would record it and send her recordings to her friend, who was another 9-11 survivor. And that story you just heard, that survivor had to listen to, to the point that it gave her nightmares. So she told Alicia that she couldn't do flood therapy with her anymore. It was messing with her mentally. Alicia called her a bad friend and in Insulted her. So this is very sadistic. She literally made someone who went through hell technically relive it through a fake story that Alicia had created. Alicia, as Tanya, also gave tours of Ground Zero, leading her to meet people like former Governor George Pataki and former Mayor Rudy Giuliani. She became the president of the Survivors Network, as I stated before, but I only hinted at how bad that was. This woman brought so many people to her side based off of her story that she ousted the former president who founded the network. She even pulled a Johnny Silvestri and told people that while their stories are tragic, hers was worse. So I bet you're wondering why no one checked out her story. One did. But because he was feeling a bond with the network, how they helped him through so much, he didn't want to pull that card yet. He was afraid that if he did, then the network would go away. Others didn't look into her story because they feared that if they did, then their own stories would be questioned as well. And they had already been through hell, so they didn't want that kind of hell brought to them. But here's the thing. If you put yourself in the spotlight, and all you are is a liar with no conscience, you better be ready for reality to smack you upside the face. On the 6th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the New York Times decided they wanted to do a piece on a survivor. And this is where Alicia's world as Tanya came to an end. But here's the thing, the reporters at the New York Times are thorough. First, they knew Merrill Lynch didn't have offices at the World Trade Center. Second, Alicia had claimed that she had gone to Yale and Harvard. Well, neither Yale nor Harvard had her on their records, so the lie began to unravel. Soon Dave's relatives were contacted, and they had never heard of Tanya Head, so the New York Times wanted to get a hold of Alicia for an interview. At first, she was all for it, but then she kept putting it off, coming up with excuses not to talk to reporters. She changed her mind and decided not to talk to reporters at all, but they kept calling her and hounding her. She began to feel the weight of the lies falling down around her. She told other survivors that they were harassing her. She claimed that she wanted to self-delete, but she ended up getting a lawyer and asked another survivor to go with her. At the lawyer's office, her story changed. She was now just visiting the South Tower. She only knew Dave for a couple of months. They were not married nor engaged. She was an illegal immigrant. That survivor heard all of this when she was asked to come into the lawyer's office. And that is when the world found out that Tanya Head was really Alicia Estave Head. She was not a 9-11 survivor. She was not the bastard child of Grimace, so on and so forth. As the news spread, she left New York not long after. Though she was photographed back in the city in 2011, where she tried to stop the person filming her from doing so.
technically she didn't break the law. She didn't take money. She only lied about who she was and if she was a survivor or not, which is still a shitty thing to do. And honestly, though it's technically legal to lie like that, she was the head of a nonprofit. She got to that position based off of this story. That should be against the law. In 2012, she was fired from a job at an insurance company because her employers found out about her past. In 2022, she started her own renovation company, which I wouldn't trust her with my cat, let alone my house. So not sure what she is renovating. Maybe a KFC, maybe a Taco Bell. One thing is for sure, she should stay away from New York City. She would probably not like the welcome she would receive. I want to end this video with some of the names of those who survived the 9-11 attacks and family members who lost a loved one in the attacks. Michael Trinidad was a telecom analyst for Cantor Fitzgerald at the World Trade Center. He was on the 103rd floor when it collapsed. His daughter is Thea Trinidad Budgen, also known as Zelina Vega in WWE. Diane DeFontis worked for a law firm on the 89th floor of the North Tower. She was the first person in her firm to arrive that morning when she heard a loud Bang. Janelle Guzman McMillan was in the North Tower and she was evacuating down the stairs. But when she got to the 13th floor, the tower collapsed. She spent 27 hours trapped under the rubble. She was the only one of her colleagues to survive and the last person pulled out alive from the rubble. Tom Conovan worked for a brokerage firm and he dug himself out of the rubble. A cement wall had fallen over him, giving him a pocket to survive the collapse of the tower. And finally, Scott Matthew Davidson was a firefighter for Ladder 1. 118. He, along with his unit, perished. He was last seen running into the Marriott World Trade Center, the hotel that was right next to the two collapsing buildings. That building was also destroyed in the collapse. His son is Pete Davidson. These and many more are the true victims of September 11th. I wish I could tell more stories to fill this video with true stories of lost, sadness, hope, and survival. Because their stories matter and are more important than somebody who blatantly put herself in the middle of a tragedy. Who took a shit on those who truly suffered. So in closing this video, I just want to say this. Fuck you, Alicia Estave Head. I hope every waking moment of your sad and pathetic life, someone reminds you of what you did. I hope you can't sleep at night. I hope wherever you are, you get spit on every day. And I sincerely hope you rot in hell. Daddy, chill. Sorry, that got dark. This whole topic is personal to me because it happened in my state. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Leave a comment, please. And if you wish to support me, I have Patreon and memberships activated. Links are in the description. Till next time.